Passive House Design Patterns. I have been facilitating Passive House workshops for over a decade. Many participants are curious about how designing for a passive house diverges from their usual practice. In the first part of this video, I review the big ideas of passive house. In a later video, we'll explore these big ideas in the context of a residential design. So let's first review the big ideas of passive house. First, let's ensure consistently high indoor air quality in buildings. That means good airflow by way of natural ventilation. And if we choose to close the windows, air quality is still maintained. This suggests that design teams need good tools for designing natural ventilation into their buildings. This is beyond the scope of the Passive House planning package. It also suggests that we need to pay very close attention to faults within the facade which might influence infiltration. We want to be in control of air movement. The next big idea in Passive House is we want to ensure good thermal comfort. So even in extreme weather, facade surfaces are close to the room air temperature. In a Passive House building, there's minimum temperature stratification, minimum drafts, minimum condensation. If well designed, facades can ensure solar radiation helps with heating while mitigating overheating risks. This suggests we're going to pay very close attention to where we're going to be locating glazing and framing within the facade. We're going to be ensuring that the products that we choose do result in reasonable inside surface temperatures. And we are going to pay very close attention to the orientation of the building where we have distributed glazing around the facade so that it takes into account both the solar heating potential and those locations where glazing is really providing us with views rather than heating. And we're also going to have a look at how we protect the facade in the portions of the year when we want to minimize solar entry into the building. The next big idea in Passive House is acoustic comfort. Environmental systems must be whisper quiet. We should have to work really hard to hear that they're doing their job. This is absolutely atypical of what we get in commercial HVAC systems. We need to be very careful in defining to our consultants the particular goals so that they can attempt to meet them. There's nothing rocket science about a quiet system. But it's a team effort. We have to reserve enough space for the ductwork to elegantly deliver air without noise and without a lot of power being required in the transport. It means rejigging an awful lot of our normal commercial and professional relationships. Next big idea in Passive House is that we want to balance our investments that are aimed at reducing the heating and cooling demands within the building. We want to do this by understanding the energy balance within the building and how design decisions influence various energy and airflow paths within the building. Many passive house buildings will tend towards compact forms. Non-compact buildings, junctions, projections, these are all places where we get additional cost and we get the risk of thermal bridges. Next, we really need to be realistic about our design goals. Passive House has many ideas that can be implemented, but are they valid within the budget and constraints of the skills involved in the design team and the construction team? This suggests that we really pay attention to the energy balance. As we try out a new idea in say the planning package, we're going to see differences in this energy balance. I often think of Passive House as a design build ecosystem with no snagging. Imagine what that would be like. How do we do that? Well, look, the U values in Passive House are actually not all that different from other high performance building schemes. In Passive House, we want to ensure that the small stuff works better. 
the details of junctions. We want to design so as to constrain the occurrence of thermal bridges. We want to design to limit air leakage faults in the facade. We want to test these aspects of the building by way of thermographics and blower door tests. But also we want to ensure that the stuff that we don't normally see also works to the same high standard as the parts of the building that we are more immediately aware of.